Hi, I'm Dr. Tiffany Lamond with Lamond Wellness, and today I'm going to try and talk to you about the psychology of serving size. So, you've probably heard this before, but you know what? I just can't assume anything. So, one of the things that is really helpful for people to reduce their portion size is because, frankly, portion sizes has, have increased so much in America over the last 50 years that they're unrecognizable. And it's a huge component of why we tend to have more struggles with obesity and being overweight. So I'm gonna give you some ideas. So these are my cute little vintage plates. This is a dinner plate. This is a salad plate. We eat off of these probably 80 to 90% of the time because this is plenty big enough for a normal person meal, if you compare it to my hand. Whereas this, the psychology of serving size is this. You're going to eat whatever makes the plate look full. So if I take the exact same serving and I put it on this plate versus this plate, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay, this is a, a full meal for the average person. However, because I've put it, so this are some roasted Brussels sprouts and some brown rice and like Cajun beans that I made. Which by the way, if you guys don't know this, that beans and rice makes a complete protein. All those Latin people are up to something smart. So this portion of the plate is completely empty. Now, if you really wanted to, you could fill this up with another vegetable, like some salad, and it would feel big to you and full of filling, and then you could you know, have what's called a high dense, like a high nutrient, low density food. So you're getting a lot of nutrients, but not a lot of calories necessarily. And in general, a good rule of thumb is half your plate should be fruits and vegetables. So in this case, we've done that, and then we have a good source of protein and a, um, that's brown rice, so a decent healthy source of carbohydrate. But psychologically, this plate looks incomplete. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the exact same serving and I'm just gonna transfer it to the other plate so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so here we have it on the salad plate. Now this looks completely full, if not slightly overflowing. I put the exact same food on it. So we're lo what we're looking at is a little bit of the psychology of eating. So have you also heard of this, the whole clean plate club? I'm not, not a big fan of wasting food, but in general, I think that we just take portions that are too big or you know, we tend to serve other people and assume we know what they want. But what I would aim for is start with a smaller portion, finish, if you finish your meal, wait 20 minutes, see if you're actually still hungry, then have another small portion. Another thing is that in a lot of cultures, they will fill up on, you know, try and fill up on something that's high nutrient but low density, like a broth-based soup or a salad, before they dig into the bulkier part of the meal. I'm going to use this example again, and I'm going to do it in a bowl. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to tell you is this is a quarter cup of walnuts. Walnuts and nuts are a great example of a high nutrient, high density food. So it has a lot of nutrients in it, but it's very calorically dense. So the servings need to be smaller, but sometimes, again, the psychology of that is that people think that I'm eating a healthy food, but they don't take into account that this is calorically much more dense. So if you compare this to salad, it's gonna take a whole lot of lettuce before you get the calories of this quarter cup of walnuts. So what you could do is you can eat out a little tiny cup like this, or I'm gonna show you an example of two bowls that I have. So this is, I believe, I think it's like a dessert bowl. I'm actually not sure what it is. And my regular bowl. So I'm gonna put them, a quarter cup in each of them, so that you can see what it looks like psychologically in these two different bowls. So I've taken the exact same quarter cup size and I've put it into these two different bowls. Now in both of these cases, it doesn't look like a ton of food, and that should be a warning to you about how much a serving of nuts really should be. But at least this looks like it's got more than that. There's like nothing in the bottom of that. It's the same serving. It's the exact same amount of food, but psychologically this seems much more filling. Now take that and put it back in the measuring cup where it's heaping and overflowing and, sudden, and suddenly this snack seems much more filling. Now we have some little teeny tiny cups in our house. These are actually tea cups and I use these for servings of stuff like this all the time. Just look, it overflowed. And now it looks like we get a proper snack. The moral of this story is try to eat your food out of smaller containers. There was this study that was done years ago where they sent people into a movie theater and they gave them a bag of chips and they wanted to see how much that they would eat in terms of comparison to what a serving size was. And as you can probably imagine, they ate way 
way more, like three, four, or five times more than a serving size was. And part of this comes from two things when you're talking about potato chips in particular. But first of all, the mindlessness of watching something and being distracted. Secondly, eating out of a bag where you're not really aware of the size of the portion. And then the last part is that these were what are called hyper palatable foods. So hyper palatable foods are foods that are enhanced with flavor enhancers and, th and colors and, and things like that, that don't occur naturally in food. For example, they say things like natural flavoring, which there's nothing natural about natural flavoring at, on, I, at all. I can't even believe that it's legal to continue to do that. Only in the US, right? So probably not only in the US, but it's definitely prevalent and it's definitely allowed. So what, what happens to the human brain is when you eat these hyper palatable foods that have you know artificial coloring artificial flavoring msg and you know uh, combining sodium fat and sugar ooh, that trifecta of sodium fat and sugar is very effective for the human brain and releasing of dopamine so you know how i think it was lays that had that ad where you can't just eat one i work in the field of nutrition i work in the field of health and if you give me a bag of doritos and I just sit there watching a movie, I guarantee you I could eat a half a bag of Doritos, no problem. It's because my brain is on overdrive, eat, overdrive eating this hyper palatable food. Now that doesn't mean I never eat things like that. It's pretty rare though, because I don't wanna eat a lot of what I call Franken foods or fake foods, foods that are just don't even at all resemble the original product. I wanna eat as many whole foods as possible. But every once in a while, I do wanna treat or I do want to eat something just simply because I'm going crazy and I'm overindulging. So when you, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> when you do that, I want you to take a portion, put it in a reasonable size bowl, sit down, enjoy it, pay attention, do not feel guilty about it, and then move on. So as much as possible, food is not just about fuel, it is also about the experience of it. And in America, we eat, we don't we don't experience eating. We don't sit down with our families as much as we used to. We don't enjoy the process of cooking a homemade meal like we used to. Everything is focused so much on convenience. And then even when we're talking about performance, we're always talking about, you know, the outcome of our bodies and not necessarily of our minds. So the psychology of eating and the psychology of portions does matter. I would argue the psychology of nutrition is a much bigger obstacle for my patients to overcome than the knowledge of nutrition. That's the thing. Patients come to me and it's not that they don't know what they should be eating. It's the psychological challenge of getting to that place. So this is just one or two tools in the toolbox. So one is eat out of smaller portions or smaller uh, containers. And two, try not to eat Franken foods.